Today, I'm gonna to take you through how you can find your best pacing strategy to set the fastest time on the new Giro Prologue course on Zwift. With this new course being a prologue and a race against the clock, it's you, the road, and the stopwatch. That's all you need to worry about. You don't need to worry about chasing riders. You don't need to worry about riders passing you. It's just setting the best time that you can set. There's no drafting here. So with this course being so super fast out of the gates, your head may start writing checks that your legs can't cash later on. This course is proving to be very hard to correctly pace because in a mass start time trial event, it's really hard to let people get away from you and let people pass you without chasing them down. Now, if that does take place, your pacing strategy will go out the window and you'll find out about that on the hill. This course is very, very fast out of the blocks. A slight downhill straight out of the start ramp, well, the start pens, into sort of rolling flat, but down. It is really, really quick. And if you've spent more matches than you've got on the flat section chasing people down, that hill is going to be very, very difficult. Now, I've already ridden the course with a Tax Neo and a Kicker 18 at 100%. And I can report firsthand that a bad pacing strategy employed for the first six kilometers makes life very, very hard to get to the top. The last two kilometers of the prologue course uphill there will take you about the same time, if not more, as the first six kilometers. So pacing is critical. In my years of chasing time trials all over Australia outside, my pacing strategy was boiled down into one simple philosophy, and that was go hardest when you're going the slowest. So if you encountered a hill, you overpowered the hill. And on the flip side of that, if you were going down a hill and you had a lot of free speed, there's no need to be at FTP or above. You can really back off and conserve. Trying to employ that strategy though on this course is very, very difficult. I just wanna chase those wheels and get my wheel in front of somebody else. But that was proving to be absolutely horrendous for my pacing strategy on this course. So what I've done is jumped over to best bike split. I've entered in all the details that I have about the course, what I'm working with, my FTP estimate of around 300 watts, my weight, the bike type, and I've gotten it to do all the hard work for me. Best Bike Split has been around for a while now, but they've really stepped it up with the features and what's available and the results I got out of putting all my data into this and applying it to the Giro Prologue course were phenomenal. Let's run you through that now. I'm still using a trial slash free account on Best Bike Split over here, which allows me to do what we need to do. Now, this isn't just for elite races. Degraders or Cat 5s or even recreational riders can apply all of this to get your best time with what you're working with on this prologue course. And that's why I think it's pretty cool. Let me run you through what we've got here. So my TT bike I've got set up here. So I've entered the TT bike data, which I'll be using virtually in game. Time trial bike of around nine kilos, mid range components, deep dish wheel on the front, disc on the back. And uh, it, it gives me a, um, oh, the climbing position, helmet type, etc. So all the details in there. The more accurate the details you enter in, the more accurate the data you'll get out. That's close enough for what I need. So we've got the TT bike in, in play. So the course I've loaded up is already in here at Best Bike Split. It's the Giro Prologue course, which is an exact replica of what they have in Zwift. So that's been loaded here. We'll have a quick look at the details on that. And because Zwift have done a one for one replication, that's what you get to ride in game. And yeah, there's the elevation profile there. It is nasty at the end. So combining the bike, the route or the course loaded, plus my user details, especially my FTP, we can then create a race or a race plan for this specific course. So jumping in here to the Zwift Prologue course, you get an overview here, which is interesting, but the race plan details is where all the real details are. And this is phenomenal, it really is. So here's the optimal pacing strategy as determined by best bike split with all the information that I've given it. And you can see here the bar graph is the power that I need to be putting out. The blue graph is the elevation profile and the orange is the speed. One thing you'll note there, my FTP is entered as 300 watts and for the majority of the course, the first 5.5 kilometers, I'm not going over FTP. That's quite surprising given it's such a short course. And confirming my go hardest when you're going the slowest strategy that I've employed outdoors for years, that works here as well. You can see there that my overpower sections here at 336 watts is when the speed is the lowest, right down to 12 kilometers per hour. And here at the two sections there and there, when you're going the slowest on course up that last two kilometers. So that's good confirmation that my pacing strategy outdoors has been working, but I think I may have been overpacing myself a little bit early on. So diving a little deeper into this, if we go into time mode, that changes everything. And you can see here, well, I'll do the comparison distance and time. 
we need to think of this effort in time, not distance. Because you can see here, more than half the time spent on this course is over FTP, looking at time, but distance wise, that's not the case. So I'm gonna work on the time-based graph. It's more of a representation of the effort we need to be doing. So a surprising thing there is out of the blocks, under FTP, under FTP for the first eight minutes until on course, and you can see the map there, until we hit the hill. And then it's all over FTP and it's game on. It's unleash everything. So it's keeping a bit in reserve for that last section of the course is where time is gonna be won or lost. The way I've done these two tests is to download the Zwift workout for this pacing strategy, load it on one computer with the controllable trainer running Zwift, load a second computer on this, enter an event, take it offline. So I'm not, so the variables were just zero. I did, there's no drafting anyway, but I did it in isolation. And then I employed this pacing strategy shown here. And the second run was employing a flatline pacing strategy at the same average watts as the optimal pacing strategy, which came out to be 292 watts. The results were very different and very surprising. Applying the best bike split optimal pacing strategy with below FTP for the first six kilometers and then above FTP for the hill climb resulted in a time of 1736. And then that was an average of 292 watts for the entire length of the course. Now applying the erg mode session to just 292 watts for the entire course, so steady state pacing the entire way, same average power resulted in a time of 18 minutes and 15 seconds. That's a 39 second advantage with the same average power, but using a more optimal pacing strategy. Looking closer at the splits or the time breakdown over the course for the two different runs that I did. First of all, I looked at the first six kilometers and then I looked at the KOM on Strava. So the totals of these might not add up to the exact time that I got on the Strava segment, but it's indicative of where the time was won or lost. So in the first six kilometers with the best pacing strategy or the optimal pacing strategy was nine minutes, 11 seconds. And with the steady state flat line sticking to the average watts, it was eight minute 46. So it was 25 seconds faster to improperly pace this. That was quite interesting and made me a little nervous when I hit the bottom of the climb. And it's no surprises that on the hill, the very steep hill at the end is where it's won or lost and where time is won or lost in a big way. And that was the result here. So for the 292 steady state effort that I was doing, the time resulted there at the Strava KOM segment was nine minutes 17. And for the best pacing strategy that I was given by best bike split, which was to overpower the hill with what I had, resulted in eight minutes 15. That's a 62 second advantage using a better pacing strategy up the hill. I think that's phenomenal. And overall, that resulted in a faster time of 39 seconds on this course using the exact same average wattage for this course. Phenomenal. There is a big disclaimer here in that everyone is a little different and how they can hold FTP, maybe how long they can spend over FTP or just over FTP. So it's gonna be a hell of a lot better to underpower that first six kilometers and then overpower that last two kilometers than going out, spending all your biscuits early on and then paying for it on that hill. And as I've already mentioned, this is not just for the elite front end races. Anybody on a bike on this course can employ this pacing strategy to get your best or your optimal time. And that's what it's all about. This is a race against the clock. It's a race against yourself. So go out there. I think the takeaway will be, don't go too hard for that first six kilometers and then it's game on. Go as hard as you can, sustained for two kilometers up to that final finish line. Good luck and let me know how you go.